Hey, brother! Man, we all know and love Finding Nemo, the touching tale of a clownfish searching the ocean, fighting off sharks and jelly and anglerfish to find his son who was kidnapped from him by the worst kind of doctor. The dentist. Seriously, when people say they enjoy going to the dentist, I... <sighs> I don't believe you. Finding Nemo is praised for its, although cartoony, mostly accurate portrayal of underwater sea life. Except for one thing that pretty much makes the entire movie a lie. <laughs> At the beginning of the movie, we meet Marlin and Coral, two clownfish setting up their new home in a sea anemone at the drop-off. The drop-off? And for the first minute, it's pretty accurate. Clownfish do nest in anemones in a symbiotic relationship. Anemones actually have poisonous tentacles, which will kill and eat most things that swim by, but clownfish are immune to this effect, so the anemone makes a great form of protection for the clownfish, and in return, the clownfish lures in extra food for the anemone. Truly a great system. Everybody wins. Unless you don't go back inside when a barracuda shows up. Then you get eaten. By a barracuda. Which is, of course, what happens to Coral in the movie. But we will come back to that. Before Coral's unnecessary death, we see her and Marlin watching over their soon-to-be offspring and discussing names. Marlin says, let's name this half Marlin Jr. and this half Coral Jr. Notice how he doesn't say, we'll name the boys Marlin Jr. and the girls Coral Jr. He just motions to one half each, which you might think doesn't make sense because how can he assign them names before he knows the genders? Now maybe just assume he means that boys and girls will all get the appropriate names, but actually his initial statement is the most biologically accurate because clownfish are all born with an undifferentiated gender. It's actually social order that determines which gender a clownfish will be, but where it gets really crazy is that a clownfish can actually switch back and forth between male and female. Clownfish are what is known in nature as a sequential hermaphrodite, which means that in any given school of clownfish, there is actually only one male and one female. The rest are all undifferentiated. The lone male and female are actually determined by size. The the largest fish of the school will become the dominant female, and the second largest fish will become the non-dominant male. Names that to me suggest that obviously a woman was responsible for this discovery. Seriously, why's it gotta be non-dominant male? Why can't it just be known that the male is the second biggest fish? Ugh, sorry, I'm getting off topic. I'm not here to fight for fish masculinism. That committee actually meets on Mondays. You better believe I'm coming into that meeting guns blazing, Jamie. Ugh. That son of a Jenga. Anyway, should something happen to the oh-so-brilliant dominant female, like, say they don't go back to the anemone when a barracuda shows up, and they get eaten by a barracuda, in that case, the non-dominant male then becomes the biggest fish in the school and will actually shift genders and become the new dominant female. Yeah, who's the dominant female now, Jamie? Wait. Then the next biggest clownfish from the school will ascend from undifferentiated into non-dominant male. Seriously though, do you think the barracuda would have even noticed the eggs if Coral hadn't dove down there? I mean, it doesn't even seem like the kind of food he'd be interested in. I mean, everyone knows clownfish eggs are super high in cholesterol and barracudas are very conscious about their cholesterol intake, so... Anyway, if you are keeping score at home, you may be coming to a startling conclusion about Finding Nemo right about now. Yes, if the movie was biologically accurate after Coral died, because she didn't go back to the anemone and got eaten by a barracuda, Marlin should have then shifted genders and become the new dominant female. Nemo, in these circumstances, would actually still be male, but he would also then become the new mating partner of the dominant female, so... Yeah, I think we can all agree that Pixar made the right decision to lie to us about Finding Nemo because it is just awesome and I cannot wait for Finding Dory. I mean, ugh, is it June yet? Please? And my question for you and everybody else is, who is your favorite character from Finding Nemo that you hope to see in Finding Dory? Let me know down in the towel section below and I will see you in another life, brother. These socks are amazing! Guys, thanks for watching. As always, please be sure to like the video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Super Carl and Brothers content. I upload every Tuesday, Ben uploads every Thursday. If you want some more Super Carl and Brothers action right now, I totally recommend one of these two 
two videos. In this one, I go over Pixar film names in other countries. Some of them are hilarious, like Clownfish Safari for Finding Nemo, or this one where Ben and I break down the new Finding Dory trailer. Ben, see you Thursday.